like talking linear periodization, we're just talking about over a period of time, I guess typically a year for that macro cycle. Yeah, to say. yeah, uh, yeah. Depending, uh, like if you're an Olympic athlete, that's four, four years. years. Yeah, if you're if you're um, a regular person, that's probably forty years. Yeah, yeah. And that's where it's weird, <laughs> where right? It's weird, With yeah. linear periodization, because mm -hmm. we're talking about basically going from higher volume, lower intensity to lower volume, higher intensity over that time span. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you do that forever? <laughs> yeah, interesting thing for coaches watching and they have clients that are coming in. It's like, you know, is a, is a macro cycle the length of time that you for are that, you know, that you're for sure coaching that client client comes in, they sign a 12 month agreement. <laughs> it's like, is macro cycle one 12 minutes or 12 months? I don't know. Yeah. I think we argue. Most people, most people aren't going to coach anyone for 40 years. No. It's like your significant other or something like that. Well, yeah, I hope I'm coaching Jacob for 40 <laughs> years and I hope you're coaching Janice. But uh, I think we want to treat our clients like they're going to be doing physical exercise for uh, 40 years or mm -hmm. 50 years or 80 years, depending on how young they are. So even if we're not the ones that are laying out that periodization that entire time, I want to, I think we want to consider that someone is going to be, and then what we're doing today is going to set them up for what happens 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it becomes really challenging where you're not just thinking about preparing someone for one, a one year event, one event, one time per year or once every four years. And you are thinking about a longer period of time because there's only so long you can, again, continue to decrease volume and increase intensity. And yeah. then it's like at this point, what happens? Do we just like drop off the cliff? Mm -hmm. What happens here? Yeah, I think, uh, I, think, I think the idea, in practice, it's difficult to be like, okay, this is what you should do. This is how long a long-term plan should be, so on and so forth. But in practice, I think it's very beneficial for coaches to do because it sets context for that, for that program. Yeah. And I think the more context that we have as coaches, the less we have to think about. So, you know, even going through the, the monotonous task of saying this program, this macro cycle is going to be January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. Once you click good on that, it, there's almost like a, a freeing feeling of like, okay, I, I, know, I know the confines in which I'm working inside of right now, right? And then you go in and you create the mesocycles and um, the short-term plans and all of that. And you're working inside of those confines. So it's just really good context. What happens uh, the next year? You do the same thing. But before you do that the first time, like you said, you have to understand, you know, how long is this thing really, right? Uh, have a conversation with your client. But for someone that's just doing fitness to, to feel good and, and because they want to move, it's like you got to do that shit for the rest of your life. So that's what you're saying. It's like, hey, your, the, your macro cycle is actually 50 years but I'm just going to think about it right now in one year increments. But every time I, I write a, a, a macro cycle or a meso cycle, I'm thinking about what I'm putting inside of it. And if it actually leads to that 50 year plan, you know what I mean? So, um, sorry, let's get back to linear periodization. I think yeah. we went off a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I think it's important context to give though. Uh, what would you say are the positives of linear periodization? Um, <laughs> it works for most people. Yeah. yeah. It works for most people until it doesn't, and then you realize when it stops working for people. Uh, it's very, it's very easy, right? Like there's objective measures inside of it that tell you if someone's progressing uh, based on how you want them to progress or not. Um, and then it keeps you honest as a coach as well in terms of you know when do I shift things up for my client? Uh, am I progressing them too quickly? I.e., you know, week two they're not able to do any more than they did week one. Um, Am I holding my am I hold, am I holding myself accountable in terms of the the exercises that I'm giving them right and is there a rhyme or reason in those exercises that I'm giving them and it thinks it makes coaches think about you know what's happening four six eight twelve weeks down the road week one so um, yeah linear periodization works works a lot better for beginners than it does for you know people that have been doing this for twenty years uh, but it it's uh, it's tried and true and it works. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's a simple way to think about uh, periodization and progressing that client's program and moving through different cycles throughout the year. Yep. It just the word linear like says it. It's very 
progressive, um, you know, just a really simple way of thinking about it. So it's tempting to want to go there even with more advanced clients because you're like, this just makes sense. It's just, it just works. Yeah. yeah it doesn't yeah. work, but uh, for everyone, but mm -hmm. in, in your brain, in the coach's brain, I think it just works. Yeah. For advanced clients though, just, uh, just to throw that one in there. Um, I think when we say that it doesn't work for advanced clients, we think about uh, advanced clients that have been doing this exercise for a long period of time. Yeah. Right. So it's like someone that's been benching for 30 years. It's like, you're not going to put them on a, a linear program. If they've been doing it like in some kind of correct way for 30 years, you're not going to put them on a linear program year 31 in the bench press. And they're going to see like these awesome gains week over week. But if that, if that same client has been doing that same bench press for 30 years, and they never did a single arm dumbbell uh, bench press. It's like you could probably actually throw that in and, and progress it very linearly because they're still learning the movement, even though their training age is so large. So the type of exercises that you want to progress linearly are very important to consider when giving anyone a linear periodization program. But advanced advanced people can still benefit from a linear program. Just You just got to be very specific in terms of what exercises you're giving them. And even if we go with another method of periodization, which we'll get into shortly, there's still going to be some linear, nation, linear uh, nature to, to what you're giving them throughout that. I thought you were that. creating a new word right there. <laughs> linear nation. Linear, <laughs> linear. I like it. Emma, is that a word? I don't think so. She's shaking her head. She's, I'm not one to make up She did this, but she shook her head no. So it was almost <laughs> like we got the okay. So linear, lin, linear, linear nature. Uh, lineation. Lineation. So we have so much lineation in yes. this program. Gosh, I'm going to use that now. <laughs> <laughs> lineation. You're going to think you're so smart on the next CCP call when you pull that out. Like, what's this new fancy uh, periodization you method? Guys, you guys wouldn't get it. <laughs> no, but there's always going to be linear characteristics that are happening even if someone's doing undulating or block periodization, which we'll, we'll get to uh, later on. Um, where was I going to go? Cons? Cons, yeah. Negatives, negatives of linear periodization. I guess we talk about uh, we talk about general population people who are training to get healthy and strong a lot of the time, but I think we need to consider athletes as well because mm -hmm. there are coaches working with athletes. And what if an athlete has like a bunch of competitions throughout the year that they need to be prepared for? Can you just give them a twelve month you know macro cycle linear periodization and think that they're going to do well at those competitions? Uh, what kind of athlete? Uh, cross about? let's say CrossFit athlete. Yes, yeah. modal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the things that are inside of that, that program are going to look obscene, you know, based on like what was in, what's inside of a program for a bodybuilder, but it's still linear, right? It's still linear periodization. You're still going through like, you know, accumulation, intensification, like those blocks are linear. Uh, when you look at them in isolation, like this accumulation block is very linear and then it's going into this intensification block, which is very linear because it has to, right? Like you know, the definition that you laid out in uh, linear periodization, it's like volume goes down, intensity goes up. And then what does that bode well for? That bodes very well uh, for going from a, a, an accumulation phase into an intensification phase. And then they go to a pre-competition phase and then they have their competition and then they hit reset and they do it all over again. And then, you know, you see, you see athletes that have like, you know, a competition on January 1st and then they have another one on February 28th. It's like, yeah, you're probably not doing accumulation intensification pre-comp comp in that, that one month span, right? But whatever you put there is going to still be linear, you know? Makes sense, yeah. Except a, a pre-competition phase. It's not going to be linear. That's just work yep. for those people. Yeah. Uh, what other cons? Um, what, what cons? Yeah, I mean, we, we, hit, on, we hit on the advanced uh, things that you need to think about in linear periodization. Um, on the client side, and this is like client and coach side, there's always that weirdness of like, I'm giving them the same work and it might be boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess a, a con in linear periodization uh, typically is that, uh, you know, it's predictable, which is, is actually a pro for an amount of people and it's a con for an amount of people, people that need to be like stimulated, where they're just like, oh, I want to do this shit and this shit and this shit, you know what I mean? But then you have some people that are like, I want to settle in for eight weeks and I want to, you know, see that linear progress week over week. Um, and then I want to come out of it and then I would do it again with another set of exercises. Um, but yeah, boredom, boredom could be an issue. Um, and then, uh, coaches being very impatient, 
and linear periodization as well. Um, I.e., I set out this 12-week training program, and I make such a – and let's say I want, like, exercise selection to be the same over 12 weeks. Coaches are – too many coaches are afraid to, like, give people the same amount of volume and intensity – over time or the same amount of volume while increasing intensity over an amount of time. Um, and they'll just go like from 10 to eight week one to two and they jump 20 pounds and they don't realize they have 11 more weeks to go, uh, to progress. So, uh, coaches have to be patient based on how long that, that split is. So, yeah, I mean, those would be, those would be the cons that stick out immediately to me. What about working on like multiple characteristics at the same time? Because if you're, you know, hitting on all 12s to 15s or 10s to 12s um, in that like phase of training, you can expect that like, you know, top end strength might not be where it is while you're in that accumulation phase. Um, what are you asking there though? Like can, can you, are you able to, um, let's not say maximize, but uh, improve all characteristics. So like, you know, strength, hypertrophy, power, speed, everything at the same time if you're opting to go with linear periodization? Um, I mean, the, the easy answer is no, but the um, more complex answer is you can improve a lot of different characteristics by just giving people a decent amount of work. And I don't even think this, this, this really has nothing to do with linear periodization, but just like, you know, what you said in those characteristics – you can get someone stronger bringing them through an accumulation phase, right? Like people get stronger when they do more work, right? Like I know that's kind of weird for people to think about. It's like don't we have to do singles, doubles, and triples to get stronger? It's like, no, you're starting to accumulate a lot of volume, a lot of tonnage. Um, you know, the, the nervous system is, is more easily able to do that. Um, and someone can actually, you know, squat more <laughs> yeah. coming out of an accumulation phase. Um, you start to think about fatigue, right? You think about fatigue in an accumulation phase going from, you know, uh, volume to intensity. It gets a little weird for people because I think people have, uh, a lot of people for intermediate to advanced trainees, their expectations are too high relative to what happens from week four to week eight in that linear periodization piece, right? Like you have to take into account all of the fatigue that happened in all those weeks and what you're expecting to happen four weeks from now, we can't ignore fatigue. That's like a that's that's real. So that's why for more advanced trainees, we have to we have to change up exercise selection a little more uh, frequently because they get so fatigued from hitting like tens in a back squat. So imagine just jumping on a ten like a a back squat program that's intended to increase your ten rep max. What will week three feel like in that in that program? holy shit, like I want to get out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, you got to take in, you have to take into account everything that you did in the previous weeks and how that's going to affect what you're going to be doing three weeks from now. Certainly. Um, so no, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, principally you can't increase all of those things uh, with every person just because you're giving them work and progressing that work linearly. You have to focus on those things, right? And there's things that take away from power, right? high very high volume and a lot of tension takes away from uh power right like you're not going to be as powerful at the end of a very high volume intent or uh, accumulation phase as a low volume high cns demanding intensification phase you can preserve power a lot better in those phases so yeah so many considerations yeah